In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this logo for a wine bar using Adobe Illustrator. To get started, jump on over to Illustrator and make yourself a new document. The dimensions I'm using today are 800 by 800 pixels. Under the Advanced Options menu, I'm going to change my color mode to CMYK color, and I'm going to ensure my raster effects are set to high quality. These two settings here, just make sure your page is set up for high quality printing. Click Create when you're good to go and you'll get your empty white canvas on the screen. Now the first thing we want to draw today in our logo are the arches that make up the basic shape of our logo. To do that, what we're going to need to do is grab our rectangle tool from our toolbox over here, and simply draw a rectangle on the page. Okay, not too big, not too small, probably something about that size looks good. And from your properties panel, we're going to change the colors now. If you can't see this Properties panel, just go to your Window menu and select Properties. From the Appearance section, I'm going to turn my Fill Color off. So I'm going to select that box with the red line going through it. And I'm going to change my Stroke Color to something that resembles a red wine. Okay, you can use one of these purpley kind of colors, I guess, if you would like. Or you can go to your Color Mixer and just play around with these a little bit, just to um, be a bit more specific with the color you're choosing. I think that's a pretty good looking color. So. 35% cyan, 100% magenta, 50% yellow, and 35% black are my color mixer levels there. You don't have to use the same as me though. Now for the stroke, I'm going to set it to about 5 points. And what we're going to do now is round off the corners of this rectangle to make it a rounded rectangle. And the way we do that is we just grab our selection tool from our toolbox here, click on the shape once to select it, and you'll notice these little blue and white circles appear in each of the four corners of the rectangle. It doesn't matter which one you grab, but it just click on it and drag it towards the center of the shape, and it's going to round off the corners. Keep dragging until you see the red lines appear, so you can't round them off any further. So you cross with a shape between an oval and a rounded rectangle, I guess, here. That's what we're looking for. Now once we've got this shape, we've got the top of our arch looking good. It's the bottom section we want to just fix up and straighten back out so it looks a bit like a rectangle at the bottom again. So select your shape again with your selection tool. And you'll notice these three blue um, shapes in the middle. We're looking for the bottom third shape, which is that little blue and white circle in the bottom third. Click on it once and let go of your mouse. And you'll notice that it selects this bottom, uh, this bottom corner here. So let me do that again. I'll just click once on this little shape here. Now once I've clicked on it once, I let go of my mouse, and now a second time I'm going to click and drag towards that bottom left hand corner, and that just straightens it out. I need to do the same for this right hand corner. Okay, so click once on that little circle in the bottom third, let go of your mouse, and now click and drag that circle towards the bottom right corner. And there you have it, you're left with that arch shape that we were looking for just a moment ago. So you can see the arch shape that we've got on ours, looks pretty similar to what we've got in the example logo. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, before I put the second arch in, I'm going to do this little circle down here. Okay, it's just a fancy little effect, I suppose, to make it look a little bit more edgy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my toolbox on the left-hand side, and click and hold my rectangle tool, so that my menu expands and I can select the ellipse tool. I'm just going to switch the colors, down here of my fill and stroke color. Whoops, maybe I need to click off that shape first. Oh, I'm having a shocker here. There we go, got it. Okay, so make sure you clicked off the shape when you switch those colors around, otherwise it's gonna fill it in with that um, maroni color. So with my ellipse tool selected now, I'm simply gonna draw a little circle like so. And I'm gonna put a stroke on it. The stroke is going to be white in color and it's going to be fairly large border. I'm going to probably bump it up to about size, oh, let's try about size 15. I'm going to make this a bit bigger too, so that circle gets a bit bigger. And I'm simply going to click and drag that down below here onto this line. Okay, and probably a little bit big there. I'm going to zoom in just to make this a bit smaller. Something like that looks pretty good. So as you can see, you've got that effect down there repeated down here now. Okay, if you wanted to, you could 
potentially bump that stroke up a little bit more. Just don't let that circle get too small. That looks pretty good. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually align these in the center of my artboard. And there's a quick way to do that. All you do is click on the shape you want to align in the middle of the page or the middle of the artboard. In your properties panel, go down to the align section, click this first tool and make sure it says align to artboard. And we click on this option here that says horizontal align center. And then we also click on this one here that says vertical align center. Okay, so that arch must be smack banging in the middle of the page at the moment. This little circle though, uh, I'm going to click on that and horizontally align it in the center. And just use my arrow keys to nudge it down so it's perfectly on that line. Okay, that looks good. Next step is to just duplicate this arch shape to make a slightly bigger version of it to go around the outside of our logo. So the way we do that quickly in Illustrator is click on the arch with our selection tool. In the Properties panel, go to the Quick Action section and choose Offset Path. Okay, now the offset will probably need to be about, uh, let's say, it's probably going to be bigger than 10 pixels. We'll try 20 pixels. 20 pixels isn't too bad. So I'm going to go with a 20 pixel offset. You don't have to worry about the joins and model limit. They should be fine at the current settings. Click on OK. And you've now got two arches, one a little bit bigger than the other. Now this bigger arch that we just put in, we're going to make the stroke a bit thicker. We're going to bump it up to about 10 point. And you can see this circle is causing a bit of an issue here. Okay, all we need to do is make sure this offset path that we put in, so the thicker outside arch, in our layers panel up here, just expand layer one and make sure that thicker path is on top of everything. Okay, and that should fix up our look. And we've got the basic shape now of our logo sorted. So the next thing I would like to do is add some text in. Okay, the font I'm going to use today is called Old Standard TT Bold. Okay, you might have it on your computer. If not, you're probably going to have to look for a download. But anyway, I'm going to grab my type tool from my toolbox. And I'm just going to click anywhere on the page for now and simply write in capital letters wine on one line. And then on the next line, I'm going to write bar. I'm going to highlight both of them and just make them a bit bigger for now. Okay, we are going to adjust the sizes in a moment. Um, but the font, as I said before, I'm just going to search for it. It's called Old Standard TT Bold. It's this one here. I think that looks pretty nice for a wine bar kind of font. So let's run with that. Now I'm going to adjust the um, two words separately now. So actually, I'll just center align them first of all. Now I'm going to start with the wine here. I'm going to bump its size up a bit. Uh, how big can we go? About 110 I'll start with. I'm going to adjust the tracking here as well, which is the space between each letters. I'm just going to give it a little bit of tracking. I might bump it up to about 10. It just puts a little gap between each of those letters. Then I'm going to go to the line below and select the bar section. And I'm going to bump its size up to um, go a bit bigger here, maybe at 160. And the tracking I might go on to about 40. Doesn't look too bad there. Okay, so let's um, run with that. Now there's a bit of a gap between the two words there, so I'm going to have to adjust oops, the letting, which is this option here. I'm going to have to adjust that to I'm going to try 150. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So 150 point for the letting. That's just the line spacing between each of those words. I'm going to bring that down towards the bottom. Somewhere down here, we can use the center horizontally aligned center tool there to get it perfectly centered. Um, the fill color I'm going to change to that oops, maroney kind of color. So I'm going to have to um, get a bit fussy here. Actually, what we're going to have to do is use our eyedropper tool to select that maroney color. And you'll see it appear in my stroke over here. What I'm going to do now is just pop over to my swatches and hit this new swatch button. And that's going to add that Maroni color to my swatch list here. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it wine. Whoops. Wine color. Click OK. 
and there it is it appears right there so now when I click on my text I can actually change that fill color quite easily by going to that wine color there we go just a little trick there for you to easily select that color again as we go throughout this logo all right so we've got the text in doesn't look too bad uh, the next thing I'm going to add in is the wine glass if we pop back over to our example and you can see that we've got this wine glass sitting here now you can go into Google and look up free wine glass vectors and see what you come up with or if you're like me I went and downloaded this wine glass from the Heritage Type Co website I actually got a whole heap of different um, icons and fonts and whatnot with this pack it was the ultimate logo pack that I downloaded um, so this is the logo I'm going to be using I'm going to copy it and paste it in okay it's as easy as that we can resize it and recolor it now if you want access um, to the link to get to this Heritage Type Co website to get this vector I'll provide the link in the description of the video below so once it's in position I'm going to change the fill color to that whiny color that we've been using yeah it's probably still a little bit too big so I'll make it a little bit smaller I'm going to use my horizontal align center tool to get it perfectly aligned in the center that doesn't look too bad for now next thing we're going to put in is a few lines across the bottom there so that's just a matter of going over to where our ellipse tool is currently and choose the line segment tool and simply draw yourself a line that runs straight across the bottom of that wine glass okay again horizontally align the center of that line um, the stroke turn it up I'm going to go about five points and I'm going to change the color to that wine color oops now I'm just going to edit copy that line and then go edit paste in front and I'm going to nudge that down using my arrow keys and I'll just reduce the size of that stroke to about two point so now I've got two lines underneath my wine glass like so, so you can see we've got these in I am going to copy those two lines simply by clicking and dragging over them to select them go to edit and copy and I'm going to go to edit and paste in front and again using shift and my arrow keys I'm just going to nudge it up I think this goes through yeah somewhere around there I might put it oh, let's say yeah about there I'll put those lines and what we need to do now is simply just rub out the lines that go through the wine glass there so highlight the two lines and from your toolbox you've got the eraser tool I'm going to zoom in a bit here and simply rub out straight over the top of the wine glass there don't stress because we've only selected the lines it's only going to rub out the lines and I'm just going to rub out a little bit on either side of the wine glass I might do two strokes something like that will look pretty good okay um, next thing I'm going to do I'm going to put in this text here that says established 1923 that's an easy one just grab your text tool or type tool sorry click on the page let's start with capital letters and we're going to write EST dot we're going to reduce the size here I'm going to drop it down to a little bit bigger I might go up to about size 40 and the tracking oh, I could probably nudge that down a little bit so the letters are a little bit closer together that looks nice fill color can be that wine color again and it's just a matter of coming in and positioning it somewhere in between the middle of those two lines I'm going to copy that and paste it in front and just use my arrow keys again to nudge it across the other side and inside it that text box that's going to say 1923 that looks pretty good and now I guess the last thing we need to add in is the name of the wine bar at the top so in this case it is Roths okay so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this shape here because I want the text to go on a bit of an arch that matches the curve that we've got there at the moment so I'm going to copy that arch and I'm going to paste it actually I might even offset it sorry so that skinny little arch the inner one offset the path now let's make it instead of 20 let's make it minus 
10. Let's see where that takes us. It's not too bad. We'll probably go minus 20, I reckon. Yeah, it looks a bit better. So I'm going to go with a minus 20 offset. And that's created us a third arch that runs through here. And it's that inner arch that we're going to make the word Roths follow. So from your uh, toolbox on the left hand side here, hold your mouse down on the type tool and select type on a path. And then go and hover over that arch that we just put in and click once. And it's going to put in some filler text, but in capital letters, I just want you to write Roths. Now, as you can see, it's appearing down the bottom um, of the page here, which is not what we want, but that's okay. We'll fix that in a minute. Highlight it, change the fill color to that whiny kind of color that we've been using. I'm going to change the size a bit bigger. Might even bump it up to about 80 point in size. Tracking, I'll uh, bump it up to about 50. And using my selection tool now, you'll see these with it selected, you'll see these two blue lines here with little white squares in them and one blue line here. I think it's this blue line here that you want to use just to drag it up just little bits at a time. You have to be quite fiddly with this and drag it around until you get it roughly in the center of that arch. So somewhere around there. Now what I'm going to do is go to type menu now and type on a path. Choose the type on a path options. And I'm going to align it to the path in the center. If I just preview that, you'll see it nudges it down a bit. And I'll click OK. Still a bit of an issue though with the size. I'm going to have to reduce the size of my arch there a bit. That's so why holding Alt and Shift to do that. And that positions it nicely inside of that arch. So if I zoom back out now, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So I think we have a completed logo here. So all you need to do now to save it, if you're finished with it, best way to save it probably is just go to export, export as, and leave it as a PNG file. I'll just call it wine, whoops, wine bar logo. Click on export, and it will just ask you for a few settings. I'd leave the resolution as high quality, so 300 pixels per inch, and I'd leave the background color as transparent. You can change it to white. If you want, or black, it's probably not going to look as good, but transparent is probably the best option there. Click on OK. If you were printing this out, um, say onto some sort of um, clothing, for example, another thing you could do is probably export it as a PDF file. You can export it for screens as well, if you're using it on websites and such. Uh, but those options are up to you. A PNG file is pretty good for now. Okay, so I'll shut up now. That is how you create yourself a cool looking wine bar logo using Adobe Illustrator.